Let's have a quick car overview. We can use the key to unlock the car, lock the car, start the engine, turn the engine off, or use the horn. As always, we're going to start off by unlocking the vehicle first. We're going to open the door. Welcome effect in the hat unit and in the instrument cluster. First off, the steering wheel. On the left is where we find the different assistance systems. We have cruise control, lane keeping assist, steering assist. We can activate distance control. Then plus and minus, as well as cancel and resume. We can also change the volume, which is the only media related function on the left. On the right, we have phone, speak, menu, which opens the menu in the instrument cluster. We can use back to go back within the menu, or go back and forth within the menu, or select specific content. We can confirm a choice or use two media buttons to go back and forth. So let's get things going and turn the car on first. Pushing the start and stop button once has activated the IC in the hat unit. So what we're going to do now is start the car. Additional notifications. And the instrument cluster has changed again. On the left, we can see the speedometer. The center contains information on the vehicle, for example, on fuel and assistance systems. Next to that, another speedometer and also the average speed. We can use the down button to change the content displayed on the right. In addition, we can select more options and different subcategories. Navigation is always activated once a route guidance is started. Phone is used to make calls or accept incoming phone calls, and audio is used to choose different media sources. Settings is a tiny menu for the instrument cluster. Up next is the hat unit. The hat unit has a small upper bar, which means it contains clickable content. First off, status information with display, wireless charging, connect vehicle features, and Wi-Fi. The hat unit does not have a home screen per se. This means that we start off with the feature last selected. The lower bar contains different features to choose from. There is audio, phone, navigation, apps, settings, and features. As you can see, we're currently using the audio feature, displaying radio with Sirius XM which is our standard radio station. We can select sources, log in to check out our Sirius XM account information. We can use the browse function, choose radio suggestions, switch channels, start the play mode,
or pick related radio stations. The suggestions consist of different radio sources, meaning, for example, Sirius XM, FM, and AM. If we now switch to a different media source, it's quite obvious that the style changes as well. Next, phone. We can check out the phone list, check the current phone status, meaning charging status or service status. We have recent calls, contacts, keypad, messaging, Siri, or do not disturb function. A special gem in this case is Siri for iOS. For Android Auto, we can use Google Home as our voice assistant. This doesn't necessarily relate to the steamer wheel, but we can use it to activate the function. Up next, navigation. The map is right in the center. We can select different points of interest and also check out additional information. On the left, we find further search functions. So let's move on to apps next. We can download the Ford Pass app and then use it to link other apps. We tried it out and it wasn't too successful, but we're sure this is going to get a lot better in the future. We did really like the function. There is Tidal, which is a music streaming service. The app catalog would contain the different apps downloaded. Those are also visible in the Ford Pass app. On to the settings. We have phone list, navigation, sound, Vehicle, clock, general, display, connectivity, vehicle hotspots, which only works when paid for, mobile apps, which works in combination with apps, system updates, Ford Assistant, which is Ford's voice assistant, which can be connected with Alexa via the application. We have an assist, as well as a valet mode. Last but not least, we have features. Those include assistance systems, there is zone lighting, where we can use integrated lights to illuminate different zones on the car. There is a towing feature, as well as an owner's manual. On the right is where we find our split screen, which also contains an upper bar. We can change the clock settings. The temperature cannot be adjusted. On the right, we can show features which we can also find in the lower bar. This way we can display two different features at the same time. We can switch between the content or display the entire content available as well.
If we click on the arrow, we can swap the content on the displays. However, this does not work for all of the features. If we, for example, switch to Trip, which is part of Vehicle Information, we cannot switch the content. So let's have a quick look at the different features available. Off-road status, zone lighting, an empty feature, navigation, phone, and Trip. Again, we can switch between the content shown. We're now going to have a quick look at the gear selection. The gear shift can be found right in the center. We're going to start off by putting the car in reverse first, which automatically activates the camera. Put the car into neutral. This is also indicated in the IC. There is manual. A plus and minus button on the side to select the first two gears. We're going to put the car into a park position. We could use the wheel to select different drive modes, which will then be displayed in the instrument cluster. Depending on the current terrain, we can adapt the driving mode. For some drive modes, the camera is activated as well. To wrap things up, we're going to turn the car off, open the door, and close it. We're going to take the key and lock the car.